Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Cat. Cat. Uh, that joke was actually posted uh, on the channel by a user named Angel, assuming that it's a human. And they liked it so much, so I decided to share it with you. So thank you, Angel. And today's question comes from John, Josh John. Uh, he asks, uh, hey Boyan, what is your favorite method of prayer uh, and what are your favorite prayer books? Um, I find this question very difficult to actually answer because uh, it is sort of like trying to answer uh, who is your favorite person of the Most Holy Trinity. <laughs> uh, you sort of, it is sort of difficult for me to answer which one I like the most because uh, we sort of need them all. We simply may, uh, we simply may not. Uh, use certain prayers as much because of our affinities and so on but uh, when i tried to actually make a list and especially a ranked list uh, of which prayers i like i find it not impossible however however i will try to answer um, of the prayer methods um, i'll be quite honest i like uh, communal prayer the most the common prayer you know attending uh, the services of the church uh, I truly do believe that our prayers are uh, more powerful when we pray together and especially if we actually pay attention like to the prayers in the church so when we respond to uh, the litanies offered by deacons and priests with Lord have mercy or Lord grant us this uh, the more we actually focus on it uh, and pay attention to what we actually seek the more the the more the lord is willing to grant it to us because uh if you're not really paying attention to it then you don't really need it so um of other prayers uh that i like which are sort of personal prayers uh this is actually an episode where i uh, have actually prepared the props for which is something i i don't think i ever really do uh, is your typical run-of-the-mill uh, Orthodox prayer book. Uh, these generally are pretty similar. Uh, they contain uh, morning prayers, evening prayers, prayers before and after meals, before and after communion, and so on. And um, uh, what, I like about, uh, what I like about these uh, is that they're an awesome school of prayer. Uh, because if you don't know how to pray, uh, this has you covered. Uh, this is especially also because we tend not to know what to pray for. Uh, we pray for the wrong things in the wrong manner and so on. And I believe that if you follow this through, you have it all covered. You're asking for salvation, for blessing. You don't ask uh, for the destruction of your enemies, for your favorite political candidate to win and so on and so forth. Um, I especially love the communion prayers, all of them, uh, and uh, when I had more time, I actually daydreamed of learning uh, them by heart. You know, those uh, uh, morning uh, pre-communion uh, pre canon, those uh, uh, 12 prayers before communion, uh, five thanksgiving uh, prayers and so on, uh, and I wanted to learn them by heart, but then I got employed, so that fell apart. The next, uh, 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 the next uh, prayer or method that I love or prayer book is the uh, is the Psalter, the Book of Psalms, uh, and I believe that this is so extraordinarily um, powerful and needed and required. And uh, this was basically the prayer rope before the prayer rope. This is the prayer book of the church, and while the uh, while in the Orthodox Church we do not have the Divine Office as it is organized in the Catholic Church, we do have the hours, but uh, uh, priests are not required to pray them and so on. It is mostly a monastic uh, service. And uh, because um, it has a lot of varying portions, these, pr uh, these hours are a bit difficult to do for a typical layman or laywoman. Uh, Actually, actually, reading the Psalms is not a big thing. Uh, in the Orthodox Church, uh, psal uh, the Psalter is divided into 20 portions called Katismata, uh, which, is, uh, which basically 
refers to the fact that uh, uh, the Psalms are one of the uh, uh, things you can read while sitting, while the typical prayer stance in the Orthodox Church is that of standing. Uh, again, earlier, when I uh, had much uh, more free time, I used uh, to pray uh, the Psalms frequently. And uh, uh, there was this uh, friend I uh, prayed uh, uh, psalms together with. We would uh, separate the katismatas, uh, so we would uh, read the opposite uh, katismata. So if I would uh, read the eleventh one, she would read the first one. Uh, and uh, <laughs> at one point, uh, uh, I think that uh, the things we asked multiplied so much that I uh, st uh, started referring to the Psalter as the Spellbook, because it was just so uh, amazing. Sadly, again, time happens and I do not have uh, that much time, uh, but uh, this is the, the, the prayer book of the Church. Before all of the other prayers that I'm going to show you today, the, this was the one. And I think that a lot of saints, for a very good reason, emphasize and overemphasize for a good reason, uh, the importance of the Psalter, I think it was St. Basil the Great who said it is better for uh, the sun to stop shining than, than for the reading of the Psalter to cease. Uh, next, of course, is the prayer rope. Uh, this, uh, in my case, this does not mean exclusively Jesus' prayer. Uh, this includes also short prayers to the Theotokos, uh, to my patron Saint, Saint George, and uh, to my guardian angel. Uh, I think that prayer rope is an invaluable tool for any Christian because it is you uh, you have a reminder to pray uh, even if it's in your pocket or uh, wherever and if you make a habit uh, of uh, actually using this when you're walking to some uh, place or from some place uh, it really consecrates that time that would generally be wasted in overthinking, overanalyzing, worrying, uh, dwelling on, into anxious thoughts, wasting your time in the future that did not happen, wasting your time with the past that is dead. Uh, basically, that you let your mind wander everywhere where the Lord is not present, and He is present here and now. Uh, then, uh, I love... Uh, the Book of Canons. Uh, canons are like these uh, short uh, 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 songs that we use uh, in honor of a certain saint, feast, and so on. Uh, I would generally read through this book, but not through every canons, because, uh, for example, I'm not that much devoted, for example, to Saint Nicholas, but uh, I would read through like uh, the canons to the guardian angel, uh, to the cross, to the most holy Theotokos, and so on. Um, and by the way, uh, it is possible and rather easy to actually teach yourself uh, how to walk down the street and pray. But uh, again, this sort of really depends on the traffic. Uh, so uh, if uh, traffic's that crazy, do not do this ever. <laughs> But uh, as regards to that, Belgrade is sort of safe, so uh, uh, also an invaluable tome. Uh, the next we have um, uh, we have the Ecatis, and uh, here I have my two favorite ones: uh, the Ecatis to the uh, Holy Life uh, Life Giving Spirit, and the Ecatis for the repose of all of the departed. Uh, I love these two prayers. One is basically the one to the Holy Spirit is a beautiful... Uh, the artistry that went into writing these two Ecatists uh, is simply amazing. Because there are so many Ecatists, some are hit of, uh, or miss. Uh, to be quite honest, I'm not a huge fan of Ecatists de dedicated to the saints, not because there's anything wrong with it, but the way uh, these two are written is simply amazing and I find difficult to switch to a typical Ecatist dedicated to a saint. Uh, uh, the Ecatis to the Holy Spirit uh, is uh, primarily a big prayer for all of the living and uh, the Ecatis for the departed is, of course, dedicated to the dead. And I think that these two prayers complement each other uh, magnificently. Uh, the last and sort of the least, because, uh, because uh, this prayer does not originate 
in Orthodoxy is uh, the chaplet uh, of Saint Michael. Uh, it, is, uh, a, uh, it is a Roman Catholic prayer, but I have checked this with my spiritual father and he okayed it. Uh, it is basically sort of a shortened rosary uh, in honor of Saint Michael, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael and the, Hol uh, the Holy Guardian Angel. And um, there are nine invocations to the nine ranks of angels, a division that uh, of course is present in Orthodoxy as well as in Catholicism. There's absolutely nothing wrong with any of the prayers, nothing of them are particularly heterodox. Uh, this prayer was supposedly uh, revealed to a certain Catholic nun by Saint Michael along with some promises. But uh, I do not pray it because of the promises, I simply pray it because I like the prayer. Um, uh, these promises are along the lines of uh, being continually protected by the angels, uh, that if you regularly pray the chaplet that you will get one angel from every rank uh, escort you to the Holy Communion, to which I'm like, Thanks, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. I, I, I don't mind having angels escort me, but but then again, it's a bit awkward. And um, let, let the angels do what they want. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they have better things to do in their in their free time. So uh, that is not what I'm praying for. Uh, uh, what I'm uh, why am I, why am I praying it? I simply like it, but. Uh, that's about it. Um, I also like uh, these random prayers. For example, uh, if I see someone on the street uh, that I that I remember, I pray for that person. Or uh, when I uh, when I meet somebody, I, I would pray for that person, and so on. And um, these random prayers are also very important again because uh, not only do you remember the Lord at the random times throughout your day. But uh, you make uh, you make an encounter with somebody, an occasion for somebody else's, and your blessing because uh, you are actually praying for that person. Uh, another uh, method that uh, uh, that I do, which uh, I can show you because it is digitalized, uh, it is uh, to uh, to have a commemoration book. Uh, this is a uh, this is basically a prayer list that Orthodox Christians generally have. We have these little booklets uh, where we write the names of our uh, living family and friends and people we know. And uh, on the other half of the book, we have a uh, list of the departed. But uh, because um, uh, 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 because I, I pray for a large number of people, having a fixed list. Uh, was sort of um, uh, uh, cumbersome, so I made a Google Doc that I uh, that I edit re relatively regularly. So there's also that one. And um, uh, why I like this method of prayer, you know, by praying uh, uh, by praying for everyone by their name, is um, uh, I was watching this bad soap opera type uh, show, and I had a thought like. Uh, imagine if uh, how things in this show, assuming it was real life, would go if someone actually prayed for these people by name. And I know a person, uh, I met him in Texas, uh, he's a friend of my uh, late spiritual father, Father Dimitri. Uh, he says that um, this person has this enormous prayer lists, and uh, uh, I think that uh, he spends like t two or three hours uh, per evening in prayer, and uh, Father Dimitri told me that uh, he would actually uh, take a name from, from the list, sit very slowly, focus really on that person, and fervently ask the Lord to help this person in whatever needs they may have. And uh, he would go uh, through the entire list like this, and I'm like, someday Lord, please give me at least a, lit, a, a crumb of that devotion that this man has. So uh, I do hope that uh, uh, we may all le learn something from his example. Uh, so that's it. I probably may have remembered something or other later on, but this basically covers it. Uh, thank you all and pray for me and I'll pray for you. Bye!